Hi there, once again, my name is Rex Ikechukunade, the lead pastor of the Citizens of the Kingdom Assembly, COCA, where we gather every now and then to make known what Christ has done. It's another wonderful time to share from the living word, the faithful word, the holy word that is able to build us up and make us to have an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And there are a lot to learn today, a lot to relearn and unlearn in the light of Christ. But wait a minute, just as I'll be back in a few minutes to continue from this word that is changing us, remain fixed as we come back. Amen. Wow, what a wonderful time again in gospel. I tell you, brethren, whenever I am opportune to share the gospel of Christ, it gives me joy. I feel like I should do it a whole day because actually, that's actually why I'm alive on earth. And that's actually why you are alive on earth. A believer is no longer his own owner. That's why Jesus is called our Lord and Savior. If Christ is your Lord and Savior, the work and the duty of Christ becomes your own. And what is his job? Salvation. We've been able to establish in our last discussion that salvation remains the plan of God for all humanity. Salvation is not the plan of God for Christians alone. It's for all humanity. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, the will of God is that all men should be saved. All men, all men. Women, boy, girl, old, young, Chinese, Indian, African, America. The will of God remains the same. God will never want Israel to be saved and want Africa to be destroyed. God can never want Arabic people to be destroyed. Why he want Christians to be saved? God wants everybody under this earth the right to salvation. And salvation is predicated. On what God has done, which man must communicate to man so that man can hear and will in turn receive. So today, calm down, take a best place in your cushion or wherever you are, and let's go into the journey in the word of God on the subject of salvation. We've been saying that God's plan is to save man. Look at the word save. So if the plan of God is to save man, it is simple to note that the God who wanted to save man will not come back to destroy some men. First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. He said, I exhort that first of all, supplication and prayers and intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all they that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Look at verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, who is the Savior of man. Look at verse 4. Whose will is that all men to be saved. All men to be saved. All men to be saved. And come to the knowledge of the truth. If God's plan is salvation of all men, it is very simple to note that God wanted everybody on earth to be saved. Therefore, if God wants everybody to be saved, how can the same God that wants to save everybody now come back and begin to wish others to die? That's a question that we need to answer and unravel. Because today we hear God did this and God did this and God did this. It's simply because people don't understand the will of God. When God said all men, criminals are included. Arm robbers are included. Uh, name them. Gay. All manners of evil. Even people that have killed 10,000 people. Because Jesus has always been the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the earth. So the sins of men can never change the plan of man. Of course, the righteousness of men cannot even change the plan of man. God is consistent. That's why he said in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. And in Malachi 3, it said, I the Lord, I change it not. So if God does not change, his plan cannot change, his will cannot change, his plan cannot change. So if the will of God has been saving man in Genesis, his will will be saving man in Exodus, his will will be saving man in all pages of the scripture. 
question. Where did all those killings come? That's the question we must answer. And that's why a church like this is instituted. We want you to come and look into the scripture to find out exactly who said what and why they said that and how come this happened. When you don't understand salvation from the pages of the scripture, your spiritual life is hazy. It's standing on one leg and it's subject to opinions of men. The will of God is not for us to be running to and fro, running from one doctrine or the other. Tomorrow is God who can kill. Next tomorrow, God who can save. Next tomorrow, God give me a latch. Next tomorrow, God make me win election. If God is involved in all this shingananya, that means that God is a confused God. Our duty is to bring clarity understanding, precise and exact understanding of God in the face of Christ. Listen to me. Jesus does not just save me. He wants me to be the defender of his character. No wonder when Christ came on earth, he met people that are selling and buying in the temple. The Bible says he made some scotches and tell them, don't you know that my house is meant to be a house of prayer, you turn into den of robber. There are a lot of robbers going out there in the name of Christianity, killing people, many people, misrepresenting God and bringing judgment to people that God have already justified. Jesus said that there is there, therefore no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, spirit of life in Christ, God cannot be a killer and give us the spirit of life. He's also said that this are we known, that God in whom there is no darkness at all. God cannot be giving us light and using darkness to fight. A good God cannot produce bad products. A God full of life cannot go about killing people. So anybody telling you that God killed is suffering for truth is, number one, sheer ignorance. And you need to bring it to the subject of the scripture to teach him to understand the nature of God. Watch this. When Jesus came, he came as the exact replica of who God was. He came as the exact interpretation of what God represents. That means whatever Jesus did was what God would have done. Don't forget in one of our series, we said that God wanted to save man, but how can you save people who don't know you? So when he came, he came to make God known. How? In John chapter 14, let's look at it. John 14, 8 to 12. He said, one day Philip asked him, show us the Father and it is enough for us. That's the next fact. And he said, Jesus said, have I belonged with you and you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How come you say so of the Father? The next verse, verse 10. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. For my Father that dwelleth in me speaketh and doeth the word. Which means everything Jesus said was what the Father would have said. Glory, glory. And guess what? I trust Jesus. More than I trust Elijah. I trust Jesus more than I trust every other prophet. Because all of them were subject to what Christ said. Hey, some people say, how come a God in the days of Elijah killed? Which God? Which God? In Luke chapter 9, Jesus was about to go to Samaria. And Samaria did not allow him to ask, get access. And guess what the disciples said? He said, Master, shall we command fire to come and destroy them like Elijah? He said, hold your peace. For you don't know the spirit that Elijah was operating at that point in time. For the Son of Man, I love that passion. For the Son of Man came not to destroy, but to seek and to save. So therefore, God's plan is to save humanity. God's plan is to save and not to destroy. Anybody who tells you that God destroyed doesn't know God. God's plan is to save and salvation is predicated in we. So everybody who died in ignorance, we are a product of circumstance. God has never killed. God cannot kill and God will not kill. Why? If he saved them yesterday, he will save them today, he will save them tomorrow. When you don't know the character of God in Christ, you become a paranoid Christian. You run to and fro. That's why I invite you. Thursdays, 5.30 p.m., Sundays 9 a.m. We feed on the world. We see him as he sees us in him. We are enlightened and enjoying. Then whenever the devil comes, we tell him, get away you, this can't be God. So therefore, I tell you, 
all the killing were actually as a product of Satan. There is something that was not known in the Bible in the Old Testament. God was not known. When God was not known, Satan definitely will not be known. The knowledge of what came when Christ came. Jesus said in John 1.18, No man has seen God at any time, apart from the only begotten who is in the bosom, have declared him. So to have another plan outside salvation is foolishness. To have another plan outside salvation is wickedness. To have another plan outside salvation is antichrist. To have another plan outside salvation is anti-God. If God came to save, Jesus came to save. How dare you, pastor, telling people that God can kill? That not God. He can't be saving yesterday and be killing today. You are actually running your own enterprise. And I tell you, it is time to stop that and come to the knowledge of Christ. Until you present Christ as a savior, you are not a minister. Listen, the people who believe that God kills are walking in ignorance. It's a manifestation of ignorance. It's a manifestation of delusion. And it comes through a wrong Bible interpretation and a dubious and criminal act of the Bible interpretation. We are not those that deal with the word of God deceitfully. Anybody who tells you that God he doesn't know him. We know God in Christ. And God didn't, Christ didn't kill anybody. He did not abuse anybody. It is by understanding what Christ taught the disciples that we begin to know that God has never killed. God's plan is to save humanity. When Jesus came to this earth, he did not have another plan outside God's plan. He continued what the Father wanted him to do. And that was saving. They brought people that were caught in the very earth. He never condemned them. He saved them. He saw sin that he never killed anybody. He keeps saving until, until he gave himself as a ransom. Listen, as a believer, for you to have another plan as a pastor is both foolishness and wickedness. You don't become a pastor to make money. You don't become a pastor to kill people. You don't become a pastor to make president and governor. You become a pastor to show forth what Christ has done. And what did he do? To make all men know and bring them to salvation. All those of you that are going around killing people with prophecy, if you touch me by mistake, you die by correction. It is anti-Christ. It is anti-God. It is anti-Bible. It is another ministry of the devil because the Bible said in John chapter 10 by 10, you have your father, the devil. He said the thief commit no more for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You cannot be killing and be stealing and be destroying, collecting people, destroying homes, uh, giving fake prophecies, calling phone number, calling family tree, collecting red cloth and blue cloth and becoming a babalawo in church and you claim to be a minister. Your days are over. Jesus has come to redeem his people back, the people he paid by his blood. His plan was God's plan, which was written in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, that all men should be saved. Brethren, where did all this rubbish come from? It actually came from a wrong interpretation of the Bible. When you don't understand salvation, you are reading the Bible out of context. The Bible is not an economic book. It's not a political book. It's not a book for famous. It's not a book for pageant. It is a book for salvation through faith, which is in Christ. Let me shock you. The Bible is not even a book for prayer. It is a book to talk about Christ. And Christ is a savior, not a destroyer. So for anybody to interpret the Bible wrongly is both a criminal and is both a dubious person. So it is important to understand God's plan by understanding what Christ taught in Luke 24. When he was raised from the dead, he did an exhaustive Bible study. In verse 25, he said, Oh fool and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have done. Ought not Christ suffered this thing? From verse 44 to 47, he said, These are the days that I spoke to you, that all this thing might be fulfilled. Then you can preach repentance through his name. So making God's plan your plan is the purpose of God for the believer and the responsibility of every believer. What do I say? Making God's plan your plan is the purpose of God for the believer and the responsibility of every believer. What is the plan of God? All men should be saved, not that any witch or wizard should die. 
all men should be saved. So make his plan your plan. Then you discover that you will begin to cruise over and there will be less iniquity, less evil when God's plan becomes the plan of God or man. Till I come your way again, give attention to reading, give attention to studying, give attention to sharing and all to follow us on our platform. We will not keep short until we cover the whole blue marble planet with the fragrance of what Jesus has done. Don't forget that in Coca is all about Jesus. Catch you. Amen.